In this lesson, we're going to look at EMM, Enterprise Mobility Management, and specifically MDM, uh, Mobility Device Management, and we'll look at MAM, Mobility Application Management, in the next sub-lesson. So what are our goals? What's our approach with EMM, MDM? Well, determining the necessary security attributes that we need to mitigate the risks of using enterprise data on mobile devices. We need to map security characteristics to standards and best practices for organizations that are recognized for dispensing security information. We need to architect a design for our proposed solution. We need to choose mobile devices and EMM solutions and systems that provide the necessary controls. And we need to evaluate the proposed solution. What's the value proposition of EMM to our organization? Well, first, we reduce the risk of flexible access by a wide use of a different array of devices. We're enabling the BYOD, COPE, and personally owned and corporate enabled solutions. We're enhancing visibility for system administrators into mobile security events. And we're implementing industry standard mobile security controls. In this example, we're going to be focusing on new standards and new recommendations from NIST. Now keep in mind that in an upcoming lesson, uh, lesson 7.4, I'm actually going to do a demonstration and show you my MDM that I use from Zoho.com. Now here's our best practices from NIST, our mobility security controls. So notice on the left-hand column, we have our security control. Then we have a description of the capabilities to achieve that control, and then some ideas or some recommendations for implementation. So this first control is data isolation, okay? Isolation of data through sandboxing and containerization. So sandboxing and containerization can be achieved at the operating system or the application level. Also, we can do memory isolation, where processes can't access other processes' memories. Now, what are some examples of implementation of these controls? Well, each mobile device may have these capabilities in their mobile operating system, or we can use mobile application management, MAM, or MDM solutions. Continuing with data isolation, we can also use trusted execution. A process is created and runs in an isolated execution environment using distinct memory spaces and controlled interfaces. Again, this can be done in the mobile OS. For example, uh, the Apple iOS excels at this type of feature, but we can also use MAM or MDM, or we could even use Microsoft TPM. We can also get data isolation through device resource management. This is the ability to enable and or disable device peripherals. This is implemented through each mobile operating system or configuration profiles and payloads. We can also get boot validation for our data isolation. The validation that the device is in a known working state and unmodified at boot. For example, BIOS integrity checks. This is an optional feature in Android. In iOS, it's provided by Secure Boot Chain. And in Windows Phone, it's provided by Secure Boot. We can also do application verification as part of our data isolation control. This is making sure that apps are being installed from a valid source. This is also implemented at the operating system level, basically to verify digital signatures of applications. Our final data isolation security control is verified application and OS updates. This is making sure that the updates are being installed from a valid source. This can also be provided using application wrapping by developers. And again, it involves the operating system capability for each mobile operating system to verify the digital signature of applications. Our next security control from NIST is monitoring. We can use auditing and logging, where we capture and store device and app information. Microsoft has what's called Intune to accomplish compliance policies, and also Office 365 can do this. There's compliance checks 
to provide information about whether a device has remained compliant with the mandated set of policies. An example of this implementation is also Intune and Office 365. We can also do asset management, where we identify and track devices, components, software, and services residing on a network. This can be implemented using SCCM for hybrid, Office 365, Real VNC, VNC Connect, where you can do, for example, screen mirroring and remote wipe. There's also root and jailbreak detection. Remember, jailbreaking is where some iPhone users can jailbreak their device after purchasing it so they can do extra things, like remove software restrictions that were put in place by Apple. A custom kernel is used to grant root access to the device. So once the iOS user breaks the device, she can download apps that aren't in the App Store. Root and jailbreak detection is for iOS and Android devices making sure that the security architecture hasn't been compromised, and we have several ways to implement that as well. Mobile OS can do it, for example, through Lookout, or Intune has compliance policies. Our next NIST security control for mobility is identity and authorization. Some of the capabilities here are local authentication of users to applications, local authentication of the user to the device, remote authentication of the user, and device provisioning and enrollment. And our final security control, uh, as far as NIST mobility goes, is privacy. And we, we can have notifications provided to users about the privacy implications of certain device functionality and application functionality. We can offer confidentiality, integrity, and availability using Symantec certificates. We can use SCEP, uh, registration with a PKI. We could use Cisco's Remote Access VPN through their mobility client. We could use Cisco Umbrella. We could even use Palo Alto Network's Global Protect solution.